it should have been Jesus Akbar instead of Allahu Akbar. By the end of this video, many are going to succumb to the truth, whilst others, mostly Muslims, like they usually do, would curse me out, calling me blind and unknowledgeable. Now to the big question, what is peace? It was terrifying. The boys had to be rescued by the police as bottles and eggs rained down on them. <laughs> Mohammed Hijab then threatened a police officer that he'd kill the boy's dog if he saw it again. However, when, the, when those Zionists came in with their dogs, yeah. that, was an, that, that was an act of provocation. So what we're saying now, and I'm making it very clear so everyone understands, yep. if those dogs come close to us again, we will see it as an act of aggression and we will kill those dogs, right. we'll put them down. Hijab and Dawa then led the crowd to Speaker's Corner and as the mob marched through London streets, screaming, we'll find some Jews, we want their blood, the police did nothing. Let that sink in. They're calling for our literal blood? And the police are just strolling alongside them. We'll find some Jews there! We want the Zionists, we want the blood! This is the nice anti-Jewish edition. <laughs> a couple of hours later, we were violently assaulted leaving a kosher restaurant in an anti-Semitic attack. I hate to say this, but I'm not sure there's a future for Jews in this country. We're being attacked on the streets by extremists, and the police do nothing. After a pro-Palestinian convoy drove through a Jewish neighborhood threatening to rape Jewish women and children, this odious pair drove to that same neighborhood, Gelders Green, broadcasting inflammatory messages on the side. I think it's about time we all agreed Islam is not a religion of peace, right? Peace is a cosmopolitan moral order that secures human rights and duties necessary for human flourishing. Interestingly, it's not amongst the base principles of morality, love, to care, the act of sincere goodwill, not out of compulsion, right? Goodwill, not out of compulsion, which means freely given. And so, peace with regards to this scenario is far on top it's more like opening a book to read and then you begin from the middle dude the story might sound cool but you still don't get to have the base understanding and that's what islam is allah began from the middle of the book and that's a deadly teacher to follow allah the most gracious and most merciful nah that's not true not gracious not merciful there can't be peace without love and so to skip the base knowledge and jump right on peace is exactly what we are seeing today they claim they know it all and want to please allah but personally i feel muslims are far from the right knowledge now let me give you something quick to reason through you think it's okay to marry off a girl both below or over her teens to an old man she isn't interested in and most of my muslim lady friends around are victims to that their families married them off to old pedos they would never love now come preach to me again concerning how loving or gracious allah is now the sad truth is male muslim bullies only agree to this act the ladies are always quiet on issues like this because defending these kinds of ungracious religious act is like a chicken defending kfc and now the bullies will be exposed in the comment section below 
to seize authority without any logical reasoning is how Allah rules. A couple of good deeds here and there, do this and get that, more like a tit for tat, do this and get this, and should you fail in any of the do's and don'ts. Sadly, you might not earn Allah's forgiveness. Allah might not be able to forgive you, but if you are able to do more, well, you think of it, and if it is within his will to forgive you, he will. Quran 2 196 talks about what one needs to do when he or she fails the Hajj or Umrah, and then ends with how Allah is unforgiving towards those who neglect those duties Allah requires should you fail to complete the Hajj or Umrah. I need a Muslim to define grace to me again. Every act of good deed I have in my Quran here has judgment, cares, and condemnations attached to it. It's either within the verse, before or after the verse. And Allah, the most gracious, is something that I am unable to reconcile with the text that I read in the Quran. I wouldn't even speak on the hadith. Now, after reading Quran 2, which is the cow, one question that I asked myself was, is Allah worshipped on the basis of fear or love? The answer I came to was fear, right? And the result is what we see happening around jihad. We have to meet Allah's standard or we don't get a short ticket to Jannah. And this is my take as a Christian who has been reading the Quran for the past three years, both English and Arabic with a huge commentary attached to it. I wouldn't even get into the hadith like I said before. How is a leader the greatest after committing so much sins? Now I'm referring to Muhammad, right? And this tells you how religion sometimes causes men to fail in reasoning. The biasness, the insincerity and lies could sometimes be overwhelming, especially if it has to do with defending your leader, right? For those of you ready to comment, oh, he has no knowledge. Look, I've heard this over and over again right he is blind his heart is blind it is not the eyes that is blind it is the heart that is blind i've heard that over and over right look i could choose to interpret each text wrongly thus twisting the verse to sound good which is something i used to do when i was a kid but i'm grown now and i wouldn't tolerate any form of imbecility it would be deceptive on my part to interpret scriptures or text without context and I'll get into context for those of you um, asking of context I'll do that I have a couple of shakes I dialogue with and they all don't seem to have any meaningful lie to tell concerning most of the verses I drop on them right at least tell me a lie without lies Islam dies and I think that's one of the most common comments rolling these days without lies, Islam dies. Initially, I tend to be lukewarm from the initial stages because I had a lot of Muslim friends and I didn't want it to seem as if they are wrong, but it gets to a point in time where I think we all need to be sincere to ourselves and say it as it is. Surah 914, Surah 860, Surah 2191, Surah 95. These are texts that most people would um, love that you explain them contextually, but the verses mostly speaks for itself and it's something that transcends. Allah loves to fight and commands his followers to fight on his behalf. 
and this has nothing to do with reading out of context i know most people will think oh he's reading out of context never true i'm not one interesting fact about muslims is they tell the truth when they get angry right it's only when they get angry they tell it as it is and the most common i've heard over the years as could we will take over the world and expel all the non-believers unquote jihad holy war fighting for god through violent means and that pleases allah a lot winston churchill understood this problem when he wrote how dreadful are the curses which muhammadisms lay on its votaries individual muslims may show splendid qualities which personally to me is very very true but the influence of the religion paralyzes the social development of those who follow it no stronger retrograde exists in this world now the twist here is the jihadists who have decided to obey allah entirely thus practicing these verses things the individual muslim isn't qualified enough simply because they aren't really practicing the instructions of allah ask any muslim about islamic violence and they will point to the terrorist and conclude they aren't muslims right they have no knowledge that is one of the most common ones these days oh the terrorists have no knowledge they are illiterate right if you had a good day they might tell you oh the terrorist has no knowledge right to understand the right knowledge with regards to the writings of prophet Salah. well the quran interestingly disagrees with you who wouldn't want to have 72 virgins and 80,000 servants granted the opportunity to reign in the seventh heavens with the prophet muhammad right and these verses in the surah and hadith get people suicide bombing simply to have the opportunity to sit with muhammad in the seventh heaven crazy the individual muslim is taught to do more good to get to heaven and his good deeds needs to outweigh his bad truth is your good can't outweigh your bad right who's measuring right who is doing the measurement bring me that guy who is measuring the good and the bad and for this reason the individual muslim isn't assured of heaven allah has to decide i tell you what no muslim is going to heaven if this is how to get to heaven aside doing good to make it to heaven there is another part death whilst defending allah and that is the sure ticket to heaven according to the quran and the hadith and that's the path the terrorists have chosen if the law of the land is islamic we respect the law of the land well if it's not islamic if it's not islamic then the law of the land and those who make it can go to hell quite honestly because allah oh said in the quran God. in chapter 33 verse 1 he said oh prophet fear allah and do not obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites you can't, you can't you can't obey him so he can go to hell uh, let me tell you, let me tell you something we will, you, well you're on your way to the hellfire all non muslims are destined for the hellfire The latest ISIS video delivered a clear and direct threat to Christians in the Middle East. You will not have safety, even in your dreams, until you embrace Islam. Then militants carried out what appears to be a mass execution. Masked men lined up two groups of Ethiopian Christians, shooting some captives and beheading others. To be by Muhammad's side in the seventh heaven is by engaging in jihad. The remaining heavens, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, and first heavens, are shared amongst the individual Muslims who failed to participate in jihad. And the terrorist refers to these type of cow kind of Muslims as the Muslims with the chicken hearts. Right? They are soft. They do not have that zeal of going in all out for Allah. Now, you get why a lot of Christians are being killed in the northern part of Nigeria and most parts of the world. This verse saves the day. Surah 489 
to 91. Kill the Jews and Muslims wherever you find them. Most people might still come and then argue, oh, he's reading it out of context or, oh, it applied to the people of his time because they fought against them so many stories. Right. But then we have people who still pick up verses like this and they still apply it today. And so now who is doing the teaching? Who is going to tell these people they are wrong? The words of Muhammad Hijab were a bit strong and it's justified by the Quran and so you can't really defend him, right? He's a guy that is really intelligent and knowledgeable and I I, I usually watch him anytime I see his thumbnails on YouTube. But you are unable to defend him and his colleagues and all those other dudes because it's something that the text supports. These are learned people who know what they are doing. I spoke of love from the beginning, if you followed carefully. There can't be peace without love. For God so loved the world that he gave now this is according to the bible john 3 16. now what this implies is we sacrifice ourselves for others and not others for ourselves that will be selfish right to sacrifice other people for us and to sacrifice other people for ourselves is is by not telling people the truth simply because you aren't interested in debating out your belief systems or, or, or not willing to spend time to explain, right? And so you just tell people, oh yeah, believe whatever that you want to believe. Just go with what makes you feel good. It means you are sacrificing those people for yourselves. You are more like a cultist, right? Christianity demands that when the truth needs to be spoken, you do it even if it's going to cost you your life and we see the apostles do same i'll get to that islam and christianity have most in common especially when it comes to morality but both religions begin to contradict each other on the matter of god how we relate with god and how god relates with us these two religions are not the same both parties do not worship the same god islam teaches you die for allah whilst christianity teaches god died for you reading from the quran al Baqarah, the cow 2 154 just as we have matthew mark luke and john as names of the books um, in the bible as the same way the quran also have quran chapter 2 it's um, called the cow right and so the cow chapter 2 verse 154 wa la takulu fi sabi lahi an wa bal anya un wa lakil la tash unurun easy english states those who die for the cause of Allah are not truly dead but alive. And there are similar verses like this particular one scattered all over the Quran. The right interpretation has to do with those who die in battle for Allah. To fight for God whether in war or not is never a thing Jesus preached. What you get from Jesus in the New Testament is a story of God coming down as a lamb to be sacrificed on an altar so you and I could be forgiven of our sins. Now that's how God chose to demonstrate his love towards us. You can't fight God's battle for him and God doesn't need you to fight for him. All the Bible teaches is to love one another just as Jesus loved you. John 3.16 teaches how to love. As Christians, we are told to go and make disciples and so love defined within the context of self-sacrifice is very very crucial not suicide bombing no it's rather going that extra mile of making the gospel of salvation known to the world and that's the biggest sacrifice you can do for your fellow human being to deliver the gospel which has the innate ability to deliver them from hell now for this cause jesus his disciples and so many christians even up to today get martyred 
not because of war but simply for delivering a message we've read so much on how certain people forced people through war to accept the gospel and rob them of their spoils you can talk of slavery but that is never the gospel and and you can't find it written anywhere in the new testament it's never a thing jesus christ preached and you don't get the apostles preaching any of that it's purely love you read the book of philemon which paul wrote to philemon a slave master instructing philemon not to see his slaves as slaves anymore but rather people in christ brothers in christ for that matter and so philemon obeyed and then now took onesimus who was one of his slaves who had run away for some reason and then took him back not as a slave but as a brother in christ we read about wars in the old testament but interestingly those writs are not doctrinal right they are not instructive they are not and that's the difference there when a muslim points me to the old testament it's never a text instructing people to kill in the name of yahweh and be rewarded a place in heaven as the quran teaches these are simply historical rates of happenings in the past and it ends there yahweh never tells his people to kill and be rewarded heaven jesus never taught that as well now let's get to matthew 10 34 and i had a muslim read this verse to me once and said jesus called for jihad too so don't imagine that i come to bring peace to the earth i come not to bring peace but a sword I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. This verse is quoted right out of Micah 7 6. Jesus is saying he's come not to bring peace but sword, a kind of sword that will separate families, a kind of sword that will make a brother hate a mother and a mother hate a brother and so on and so forth. Have you come to realize how many People, including Muslims, claim to love Jesus, but then that love tends to fail immediately a family member accept Jesus. And then this particular verse tends to act, separate the family. You would either be imprisoned in most Muslim countries, killed, or in most African Muslim homes, you will be beaten and cast out. Right? Again, peace without love is a bogus teaching, a huge scam from Allah for that matter. And so this verse in particular is applied to unbelievers and most Muslims because you claim to love Jesus but then the moment Jesus sets foot in your family, which is a family accepting Christ as his Lord and personal saviour, then the family is divided. And there are so many stories on the internet. Um, with regards to that which most people have moved to the west simply because they are being sought after to be killed in the middle east simply because they accepted christ and i'm confident in saying this because i've lived in muslim communities and i know how uh, most of those goes on there the fear for breaking Allah's rule there isn't going to be peace for the wicked so far as jesus is in the boat right the mere presence of Jesus confronts the wickedness resident within people and light and darkness can't coexist. One has to evacuate. That is why people fight Jesus because if Jesus is in the boat, then evil has to leave. Let's do our best to pray for Muslims around the world that they come to the true knowledge of Jesus Christ and repent and put their faith in him. Until my next video, peace out.